Now, this is a real data disaster uh, that I helped someone with. Uh, so we can't do a VLOOKUP, and I'll show you what happened here. Uh, we have these employee names, and every week we have to we receive this information here, or the person I was helping receives this information. They have to look for each employee into uh, the into this column and get the manager name over here. So this is a simple VLOOKUP, but as we know, life is not perfect. So this is what uh, the person received. They received this messy data set uh, here, where in each of these little boxes, and this is just a sample, there's a whole bunch of these boxes, the manager names at the top, all these are manager names, and the employees that report to them are below. So all of these people report to Brandon Acosta, and the same thing here, and for all these other ranges. So that's obviously a problem. So let's just check this. So we have our Casey Ellis, and we look over here, Casey Ellis is there, we have to look to the top to get the manager name Brandon Acosta. Now. What options do we have? Well, we could ask for the previous data structure, uh, of, but that would be the easiest, but we could end up waiting a long time and not getting our work done. So second option, manually find the manager names. Uh, use the find feature, copy and paste hundreds of times possibly, right? So this is also very painful because here are the names and there's a whole bunch of them and we have to take each one, copy the name, go into our data, use the find feature, and uh, go like this, click next, F here's the name, get the manager, copy that, uh, and that would just take forever. So that's not a good option either. Uh, option number three, manually restructure the data. Uh, painful copy and paste, right? Because repeat this each time, that is really painful. We have to take the, uh, this data here, all of this stuff, copy and paste it, repeat the manager name, so we would, we would end up with our original structure, employee with uh, the manager in the next column. That's also very painful. Uh, so finally, step four is a formula solution where we can create some formulas. It takes about 10, 15 minutes, but it's definitely doable. Uh, so here we have our formula solution, and what is our step one? Well, step one is just sort of con for convenience. I want to create a name range out of all these little mini boxes. So I'm going to go to the very bottom right, right over there. I'm going to just drag up to here to that cell B3 in the name box, type in messy data and press the enter key. So I don't have to keep coming back here and highlighting this over and over again. Uh, so let's go to our solution. Step two is actually important, but it's just to be careful. We want to make sure that each name is only there once. If they don't appear, well, that's fine. Some, maybe that's an error or something, but if they're there multiple times, then my solution wouldn't work. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say equals if uh, my B2, the name here, equals, and I press the F3 key to get to my name ranges, equals messy data, which is the name range, then I want to see a one, else a blank. This is our array, and I'm going to put, you can put, I guess, sum or count here. So we have a problem if the names are there more than once. So let's drag this down, and we can confirm. Uh, I mean, I could put a format at the top to say what's the max, but all the names are there only one time. So that's good. My approach will work. Let's go to our next step. Which column? So I'm going to come back here and take the if part. I'm going to go like that and copy this, kind of reuse it, go in the formula bar, uh, paste it. So if before equals messy data, what do I want? Well, I want to get the column. I want to identify which column each employee is in. So I, like, I guess I could type, uh, go like this, press tab, and then say blank. Now, this is my array, but the answers are stuck inside of here. If I highlight this and press F9, uh, we get all this information, but we just care about getting that number. We know there's only one number, uh, so I'm going to come back here and put, let's just put min. We could put min or max, it doesn't really matter. Control, shift, enter, because this, just like this cell, it's an array formula. Uh, we can't just press enter. So, you know, control, shift, enter, and then we drag this down. So we're getting the column number. Let's just go make sure. Orlando Graves, he is over here at the very bottom in column B. So column A is one, column B is two. There's Orlando Graves. And so that part is working nicely. Uh, and now, if this in real life, you want to check several of them, like be extra careful. 
Uh, our next step now is which row. So I'm going to go in here and copy the whole thing. And you know what I could have done? If I lock, this, this is even better. If I lock before, drag it down, I just take this, copy, paste, or just drag it over. It's exactly the same, but I want to get now the row number. So I just remove the column, type row, control, shift, enter, drag this all the way down. So now we have column two, row 80 for our first employee. Let's check that out. Uh, column two, row 80, which is correct. But th the whole purpose of this is that we want to get the manager name up here in row 75. Uh, so that is what we have to do. That's the next thing. So now we need to create a binning table. Well, what is that? Well, manager rows, if we come back here, the good thing about this is that it's consistent. We always have these two blank rows between these groups. So row three, row 12, row 21, we're always adding nine uh, to, to get the next row of managers. Row 30, row 39, all the way down. So it go, ends here at uh, 75. So what I did here is I just put these numbers in uh, representing the manager rows. That is the neat thing about it. So that now feeds into step six, which is, well, what is the manager row uh, for Orlando Grave? So he, he's in row, if we go back to here, he's in row 80, which is right there. But we want to get row 75. So that's how we do this match, this binning. We say match the this 80 into this list. Now, we know that the number 80 is not in here, but because these numbers are increasing as we go down, this is called binning, and I can just lock that group or that area, and I can say true. True means, uh, is the 80 in greater than 3 and less than 12? That would be the first group. So we see at the bottom here that it is, it's highlighted here with conditional formatting, that 80 fits into this group. Uh, it's greater than 75, and it's less than 80, so it's the ninth group in this list. That's why we get a 9. If we count down 1, 2, 3, like this is the first group of numbers, second group of numbers, all the way down we get a 9. Now, this is not the final thing that we want. We don't want a 9 or a 3 or a 2. We want this actual number, which is the row number for the manager. So I have to come back here and put the index in front of this. Index says, hey, give me a bunch of answers, which are these guys, and then tell me which one you want. Well, we know, remember our match was a 9. If I go like this and press the F9 key, it's a 9, so it's going to give us the 75 as an answer. So I hit Enter, I drag this all the way down, now we're getting those row numbers only for the managers, right? 75, 66, only for these rows, for all the way down. So we get, uh, so now our final step is simply to get the manager name. So we use our index function and we say, okay, index says highlight all the possible answers. So I go all the way down to the bottom right uh, into cell T81, drag all the way to the top to A1, because remember, I can't use my name range. Uh, because this, well, I could adjust it. But anyways, I'm going to just do this. Press the F4 key. Uh, now it's going to ask us, what's the row number? What's the column number? Well, we have that now. Let's go back here. And we want to say the row number is the manager row for Orlando Graves. So I'm going to click the 75. Oops, that puts the sheet name. I don't want that. Let's just backspace. And I want to get the column number, which is going to be uh, D4. So D4 has the, the column 2, which was uh, column B. Press Enter, drag it all the way down, and we know that this is the manager for Orlando Graves. We can check really quickly, all the way at the bottom here. Uh, so Orlando Graves, Mara McCall, and, you know, in real life, we would check a bunch of these just to make sure it's working perfectly. Um, so that is it. Uh, a bunch of steps, but in 10 to 15 minutes, uh, this can be solved. Now, the Power Query method, wow, that took me some practice because I've used formulas for 20 years. But Power Query is still uh, a mystery, and I'm learning it. So watch my next video, and I'll try to explain the steps I did to solve this uh, with Power Query, which would be a great option if you had just a ton of data, and maybe this would be too slow. But uh, anyways, thanks for watching, and uh, please like the video if you enjoyed watching this. Thank you.